Hello everyone, happy Friday. Welcome to the sixth episode of ESI Digest. I'm your host Adam Fitch. I'm also the editor of Esports Insider, the leading business destination publication for esports. Now, this series is always breaking down what's happened in the industry in the past week, explaining the big stories, why they matter. And and yeah, we, we keep it short and sweet over here and that's exactly what I'll do. I hope you've all had a great week and, and let's get into it. So the first story I want to mention is Vi.gg. So bookmaker owned by esports entertainment group expanded its deal with dignitas so the hbse owned um, organization uh, previously uk based now american based expanded its deal and has acquired the naming rights to dignitas's csgo team so it's the former nip roster legendary um, roster at that and and not only only have they acquired the naming rights so they're now dignitas vi um, they've redesigned a jersey with, with the red colour and a massive logo for Vi on it as well, front and centre of the jersey. Uh, so really, really doubling down on Dignitas and the kind of legacy roster it has. And and, and while I don't think Vi.gg is as big as, say, like Lookbox or Rivalry, um, it, it's clear, um, especially like going public and, and New Jersey establishment um, that it kind of got the ball rolling with in June, it is, it's clear it's, it's ramping things up now. And, and also... Um, there'll be activations around New Jersey, um, the New Jersey marketplace specifically, and, and they have their sights set on expanding there and getting a license there, so that makes complete sense. So Dignitas selling the naming rights to its CSGO roster to Vi.gg. And the next story is a bank uh, entering the esports industry, and it's TD Bank, which is, I believe, the Toronto Dominion Bank is what it stands for, and they've entered into the industry through Toronto Defiant and that is an Overwatch League franchise owned by Overactive Media who also operates in the Call of Duty League, uh, in LEC, in Flashpoint with Mad Lions and and yeah it's got um, a couple of other companies as well I think and obviously it, it operated Splice which you probably be best known for still um, but yeah I, I'm, I'm trying to think really um, the crux of it is it's a bank entering esports and it's going to activate online. I mean, obviously, COVID makes it a bit hard to do anything else, but like Fan Appreciation Week, it just had to activate the partnership and to, to commemorate the, the launch of it. And there'll be a, a, an online kind of grassroots uh, Overwatch tournament, which makes sense considering it's an Overwatch franchise. And there'll be like virtual meet and greets with the players for fans as well. So uh, another another financial service, another financial institute as such entering the esports industry. Something we're seeing more of recently with like Luna, uh, with Astralis Group and, and such like that. So Team Heretics, a Spanish organization, uh, is launching a fan token through Chile's um, like blockchain platform. It's got a brand called Socios. I believe it's pronounced that, socios.com. And um, this is the second esports partnership for Chile's. The first was OG, like the, the two-time winning um the two-time winner sorry of the international like the biggest tournament in esports for dota 2 so fans can purchase tokens uh, the the kind of the the period in which they can purchase these tokens which i'll explain what they can like do with the tokens in a minute is uh, between the 25th and the 27th 125,000 are available and they'll cost two euros each which is about one pound 80 each um and once that period is closed there will be a total supply of 5 million tokens and the price will be demanded by um, basically, um, or oh, sorry, it will be dictated by the demand and, and how fast they can supply that and, and such. But it will allow fans to ha- make like decisions for the organization. So it will say like, um, right, uh, I'm trying to think of an activation it did with OG. I think like banners or like jerseys or something. Here are three jersey designs like vote we are tokens. Um, which jersey you like and the one that has has the most votes will win and we'll use that for the next six months or something you know it allows some fan interaction uh, putting the money where the mouth is for like dedicated fans as well so that um, team heretic spanish organization huge fan base really passionate there's now gotten involved in that action and, and next week we'll we'll see just how it goes in terms of demand and next up we have League of Legends Esports, another deal on a global basis for Riot Games, is flagship title, which, you know, obviously Louis Vuitton and, and Oppo and, and Mastercard and Alienware, like uh, huge brands getting involved and, and now Cisco as well. So uh, a multinational technology <laughs> conglomerate, you know, quite a, quite a big company um, with, with League of Legends mostly being online right now still. Obviously, world is going to change that um, with the like a bubble kind of system, I guess, which we're seeing in some traditional sports. Um, many of the leagues are still played online and Cisco will provide um, 
its services as its uh, official enterprise networking partner um, is, is going to provide updates to like the, the professional servers that, that the games are played on, especially for the, the Premier uh, Leagues and such at least. And um, yeah, it, it will service the World Championship, uh, mid-season invitational and all-star event, which uh, is kind of like, that's what's classed as a global partner, is like supporting all of those, uh, typically at least with, with partners of, of this kind of elk and of this nature when it comes to Riot Games and League of Legends. And the final story I want to cover... Um, you're gonna have to bear with me on the pronunciation on this one. Uh, I I am not Korean by any means, and I do not speak Korean by any means. Uh, though maybe one day. So Pittsburgh Knights, a North American organization, um, ownership stake owned by Pittsburgh Steelers and Wiz Khalifa, the rapper, has partnered with um, Absolute Power Esports, which is a holding company for Saul. A1 Prince, I think it's I think it's called that. Um, I think that's how it's pronounced at least. But it's it's an LCK team basically, um, and and Pittsburgh Knights is investing alongside Ape, which is um, Absolute Power Esports is kind of acronym that uh, they're investing together for an LCK. They call it a franchise, but it's not a franchise. Uh, as long term partnership model coming to the LCK, like we see in the LCS and LEC. And um, you have to apply for that and, and pay to get in and, and meet all the requirements there. And, and Pittsburgh Knights had already it had already been revealed um, or reported, I should say, that, that they were looking to get involved and own an LCK franchise or, or partner team. And now this is obviously the, the case here. Uh, nothing indicates that they've been successful just yet, but should the, the application go through and they do acquire um, a spot in the New Look League, then Pittsburgh Knights plans to uh, increase its investment. And what it will do is it will allow uh, the team, which I'm not going to try and pronounce again, but the LCK team to kind of expand its, its fan base and, and roots into North America and South America. Um, so so really a, a, what they're calling as like a, a global strategic partnership. We haven't seen too many of these in esports to date, but I believe like FaZe Clan were trying to get in and Energy Esports as well were trying to get in. So we'll have to see how, how those go and if we see more of them. But this is kind of one of the first. I don't think it is the first. I think there are some more kind of partner teams. But um, yeah, it's, it's still a cool deal nonetheless. And um, Pittsburgh Knights, again, I, I actually heard, like this is a little nugget for you, that they were looking to build things up as much as they can and then exit. Um, and that was probably a year ago I heard that now. But everything that they're doing, securing the new partners... And obviously getting involved at LCK and bringing in new new ownership and, and, and investors suggests that may not be the case. But also you can make a case as to why it would indicate that that is the plan. Uh, nonetheless, interesting deal there. And that's actually going to wrap it up for the, this week. There was some sm smaller news, smaller headlines, but we'd be here for 15, 20, 30 minutes if, if I dug into them all. These are definitely the major stories for the week. I hope this has helped you stay on top of things and, and really get the context behind the deals and, and why they matter. I hope you have a great weekend as well. Thank you very much for, for joining me for this um, short episode. And I'll, I, yeah, I'll see you next week. Um, stay safe, of course. I mean, I mean, it's. I'd like to say things are getting better <laughs> COVID-wise, but it, it doesn't seem like it. So I, I hope gaming and esports is helping, helping get you through it um, as it is for so many other people. Take care. Cheers.